Hey guitar champion, what's going on? I'm Justin Hombach back from my practice cave and welcome to today's video. Today we're going to take a look at the top 10 hardest guitar solos. This list is a personal list because trying to make a list in general is destined to fail. I mean, take a look at the Abomination, which is the Watch Mojo top 10 hardest rock songs to play on guitar list, where they put one from Metallica in front of Dance of Eternity from Dream Theater. Just like, no. So this list is based on songs that I've covered and learned in my career so far. I will try to explain what is hard, especially on these 10 songs. And of course I know that the word hard can be seen in different ways. A solo can be hard rhythmically, a solo can be hard from the phrasing and from the sound. But here, I mean, this is a track channel. So we are of course focusing on technical aspects and technical difficulties in certain songs and certain solos. So I would say, let's start with the list. I wonder what's inside that box. Ah, could you please shut up? I want to know what's inside of it. Uh, it's the Zen of Speed Picking and the Zen of Sweeping now as a bundle. What, what, what did you say? Yes, when you buy both, you can get one for 50% off after tell this Brad Pitt. Well, these kind of advertisements are getting subtle and weirder every day. Anyways, if you want to improve on your speed picking, I highly recommend to check out the Then of Speed Picking, the online masterclass about speed picking that I have designed to solve speed, hand synchronization and precision problems and much more with fun etudes, fun licks and fun exercises. And get it now because now you have the possibility to not only get the Then of Speed Picking but also the Then of Sweeping, my big masterclass about sweeping with more than 12 sweep etudes in one big bundle. Check the link in the description box and let's start with the list. The list is not in a particular order, so every solo from these 10 solos are all hard, yeah? And there's not one that is harder than the other. They're hard on difficult kind of aspects, but they're all definitely one of the hardest things that I have ever learned, oh yeah. All right, and for number one, we have the legendary intro from Paul Gilbert's Intense Rock number one. <laughs> Keep in mind a few things. One, Paul Gilbert was, I believe, 20 when he released this. Second, it's all improvised. Third, the situation how he has to record it. Because as soon as these kind of things are on, my stress level is getting up and the way how I perform on my instrument is getting low as fuck. Imagine this situation with people around you looking at you, bigger cameras, a huge production value for back in that day and a young Paul Gilbert sitting there and improvising this solo. Under these circumstances, this is phenomenal. And trying to reproduce this solo is not easy as well. We have extreme picking licks, we have extreme string skipping licks, we have interesting played arpeggios, interesting scale runs, and all in one, one fucking take. Try to reproduce that. You will have a lot of fun with this challenge. Solo number two is Tendonitis by Jason Richardson. Actually, this song gave me real tendonitis. I mean, tendonitis, they aren't too bad when you know how to handle with these kind of situations. And I have tendonitis once per year or something like that. But especially that song, the huge stretches on the low B string with the heavy riffing and then transforming this on the higher B string. Oh man, these stretches and this kind of tempo and the patches and the sweep that he's including in that kind of riffing as well. Oh hell, that gave me not an easy time. On number three, we have the legendary five solo by Guthrie Govan from Jam Track Central. <laughs> Take 
Again, a solo that is improvised, played in one take, on one spot, in difficult circumstances. But again, what Guthrie Goffin is playing here is really not that easy. The fingerings, his method on doing position shifts really quickly, really precise, the kind of chromatic bebop lines, the outlining of the chords, and then of course all the tapping stuff going on. I still have to finish learning this song, I've never really finished it, but the first few sections are giving me a lot of bliss on my fingers. and. <sighs> Yeah, that was definitely not easy. And next to number four, we have Michelangelo Badio with his legendary Speed Kills song. <laughs> Here in this song we have one of the most precise picking, most precise three string sweeping, we have one of the most interesting tapping sections in the end and some of the really cool neoclassical lines included in this kind of 80s rock ride with, yeah I know the sound is a lot of delay and a lot of rework but what Michelangelo Badio is playing here is top notch precision. Highly recommend to check this one out. It is one of the more possible kind of songs, especially the beginning. I would say two third of that song is really doable and it's worth to check out. I also recommend for intermediate players, especially the three string sweep section as well. If you are getting more and more into sweeping, check out this section, definitely. But trying to play everything in one run, covering everything in one run was not easy, but it was a lot of fun. Now we have one of the songs from my band Eternity's End and this is Arcturus Prime. <laughs> And even my bandmate who wrote that song, the legendary Christian Münzner, he once told me this is definitely one of the hardest songs that he has ever written. We start with one of the most difficult picking intros that I've ever learned. Then comes some really heavy riffing with some extreme string skipping and some extreme position shifts in it. We have really fast sweep arpeggios where we're going from three strings to five strings to the reverse sweeping on three strings and whatnot. We have neoclassical arpeggio sections where you need a lot of control for your right hand, tapping and much more going on. We have five instrumental sections that song and I believe five guitar solos, four or five guitar solos. In the guitar solo I said to myself, oh god, that song is so hard and so technical difficult, fuck it, I'm going to play blues in my solo and try to design my solo a little bit easier because that song is stressful enough. But the good thing is I've learned that song during the time where I designed as well the then of speed picking and the then of sweeping and both online courses are well designed to walk you through that level so you can play songs like Arcturus Prime. Because all of the stuff that I've put inside of these online courses helped me to being able to play these kind of songs. If you want to have the official transcription of that song, check the link in the description box. There you can download it for free and you can start learning Arcturus Prime today. And speaking of Christian Münzner, the next band, the next song, he actually showed me. He once wrote me a text message like, dude, check out that band. This is Racer X, this is Eternity's End on crack. I mean, Eternity's End is already Razor X on crack. And this band is Eternity's End on Crack. And I'm talking about The Ancestry by Edo Falashi. Edo Falashi used to be the vocalist for Angra and then he started his solo career and especially in his first record Veracruz. There are the two guitar players, Diogo Mafra and especially Roberto Barros they played the most insane shredding that I've ever heard. It's not only that this is fast as fuck, these lines are also extremely complicated, extremely new for the right and for the left hand. I checked out the ancestry a little bit and I gave up extremely quickly because I realized, nope, nope, this will take a few months 
to learn, to practice and to master. This will be a challenge when I have a little bit more free time on my hand, but currently with all of this kind of stuff going on, I have enough to practice for bands and for YouTube and for Instagram and whatnot. Right now, nope, I'm not going to learn this, but I highly recommend to check it out for you guys because it's not only a cool song and one of the best records from, I believe, 2021, especially the song Land Ahoy is so beautiful, such a really beautiful, progressive power metal song it is definitely worth to check out the whole thing the guitar work on this record is an absolute masterpiece and blew me away but speaking of practicing last year i've practiced a certain section for a certain song i sadly never finished it but for me one of my new year's resolution was to finally nail this section the way how people think it is played and i'm talking about the glass prison by dream theater There was this big mystery about this section and if it's sweeped or if it's picked. No, it's sweeped. It is definitely sweeped because when it comes to picking, this is the hardest thing that I've ever tried to pick in my whole fucking career. The alternate picking on these arpeggios are insane. There are just three videos out there from people who can really cover it with alternate picking. One is Martin Miller, but we have to say the Martin Miller version is not the original tempo. It's like 15 to 20 BPM slower. We have Andy Wood, but here I have to say, even though I'm a huge fan of Andy Wood, you cannot hear his guitar so good in the recording. You more hear the guitar from the original recording, like in my video as well. And a guy where I forgot the name, but I will write it down right here. I will do the research. He is a little bit more unknown, but it's definitely worth to check out him, his playing, because that was really incredible. The difficulty here is the tempo and especially the switches between inside picking and outside picking. Going from speed picking to sweeping. And one of the hardest sweep sections that I've ever tried to learn is Ethereal Skies by Obscura. Rafael Torrelio is a well-known face here on my YouTube channel. I had him several times here as a guest. And in Ethereal Skies, he showcased a really creative way to use sweeped arpeggios and uh, general playing around with arpeggios. Because he's not only showing how you can create beautiful melodies by outlining arpeggios, he's also combining it with a really interesting rhythmical kind of aspect because his arpeggios are based on a marching rhythm, which is on the snare. So we have a lot of breaks and a lot of pauses in between those arpeggios and trying to nail this clean and precise together with that pauses and then the weird arpeggios that sometimes have been played in really unconventional way. On number nine, we have We'll Be Back by Megadeth. Back. I play in Germany's only Megadeth tribute band, which is called Megalife. And actually, we were the first band ever who played and recorded this song in a live situation, besides Megadeth, of course. And playing this song live can be quite frustrating sometimes, especially when the other guitar player is starting that song way too fast and the drummer is not being able to slow down that song. We are not playing together with a click, even though that I wished a lot of times that we have a click in our in-ear, but we are not playing it with a click, we are playing it completely freely. So again, it can happen that the guitar player is starting that song 10 to 50 BPM faster than the original. And this always gives me a lot of trouble live because the second Kiko Lorejo solo here is one of his coolest solos, but also one of his most difficult solos because of the combination of jazz and bebop phrases together with a fast metal shredding kind of thing. He's doing a lot of chromatic work in there, outlining arpeggios. And this is so unconventional for the usual shred guitar player that this sort of become a real challenge. I'm nowadays really, really thankful for the four years in jazz university where I did nothing else than playing those lines, than playing bebop lines. 
Can you imagine that? From 2012 to 2017, I was not shredding at all. I didn't have a high distortion sound or whatnot. I had a big fat jazz guitar and was only playing bebop all day long. But it definitely does not make the solo easier, especially when we are playing it faster than the original. And number 10 is actually a band where I used to make a lot of fun about these kind of guys when I was 16, 17, 18. The band was the first meme band in internet guitar shred community. And I'm of course talking about Dragon Force, and I'm of course talking about Through the Fire and the Flames. Because again, I made a lot of jokes and a lot of fun about this band back in the day, Studio Force and whatnot. Everybody who have lived through that time, they, they will know. Time passes on and never really followed Dragon Force too much. My hate against them definitely disappeared more and more the more I got mature and all this kind of weird stuff. But then I saw them for the first time live a few weeks ago and I was blown away how precise and how clean they actually played through the fire and fucking flames. And after that I thought, well, I have to give it a try. And now I'm learning it and I have to say, Hell yeah! This is some really interesting shredding. The lines, especially for the left hand, are not easy and you have to have some really quick fingers. So this is a solo that is extremely helpful if you want to boost up the tempo in your left hand. But as well, the combination out of sweeping, the weird tapping, some of the unconventional pentatonic lines from Herman Lee, uh, all this kind of stuff. Ha! Ah, it does not only sound to be honest, extremely cool. It's also a lot of fun to learn, to practice, and hopefully one day to master it. And so much about my list about the top 10 hardest solos to learn on guitar. I hope you liked this little link. If you liked it, then subscribe to this channel, check out the Patreon and the link in the description box. And I hope I'm going to see you in my next video. Cheers and power your progress.